Okay, today we're going to take a look at some uh, still images from the movie Chopping Mall with the uh, Killbots. And uh, early in the movie, they have three of them showing up here for a, a show and tell. But uh, things you can make note of is how the body goes up above the treads, how the front and rear wheel are above the ground, and the uh, roller skate or skateboard wheels, if you will, down here are the only thing touching the ground. And I think from that picture, that's about all we can gather. Also, you can see the number one on this one. The guy that originally designed the robots for the movie was a big uh, fan of, um, gosh, it slipped my mind now, Man From U.N.C.L.E. You know how they all wore the uh, triangular badges in the Man From U.N.C.L.E. So he always tries to incorporate a little bit of something from that in his designs. So in this case, he, he badged them, and that's how he numbered them. Well, let's see what else we got here. Here's a side view where I was able to pull a lot more information on right raised parts and lower parts and where the body would go and how there is a back part that sticks out further. And this shot doesn't tell us all. Well, this is the back of the body. This shows the, the fake treads. These are actual treads. And by the way, they were using the same uh, tabletop uh, conveyor units like Johnny Five did. They just didn't do any of the fancy cuts and modify them and fancy grips and all that. They didn't have any budget for this. It's just some wheelchair motors driving these uh, conveyor bits. But anyway, there's uh, some fake treads placed in the middle and here you can see the raised parts. Again, we're looking at the back. Looks like the body comes in quite a bit, quite narrow. Uh, the arms are spindly. They're going to be a bit of a problem in smaller scales. And actually, on the claws, they claim they just used the uh, toy claws that you can still buy online. Modified them to look a little different. Nice front view. It's in action because the treads are blurred. But here we can see there's a bumper piece in the front. And there'd be some different detail parts that could be added. I'm planning on trying to add those later. But it uh, gives you a little bit more idea of the look of the thing. Uh, this would more or less be good for maybe trying to figure out the arms, the neck, and the head parts once I get that far. Got some more detail on the back side. This is back in the show and tell part. And also numbered in the upper bodies. I'll have to try to keep that in mind. Here we can see the uh, details on the front of the body part above the bumper. And again, this, this kind of shows the uh, diameter of that waist part. I think I got mine a little bit too thin, but it's okay. I can design the new waist into the body where it sits down on the body and make up the difference. And all three of them. Anything I can glean from that? Nothing, nothing new there. And this is getting in the dimensions of the gearbox. Here we've got a, a different lower perspective. Again, where we can see that. Kind of see this waist part better. This kind of looks stretched out. It's probably due to the camera angle. More mortar stuff. Now here's a nice close-up of the tread sections. Where you can see how the roller wheels ride and where they're pinned. And that's the number one. And uh, some details there. It came in handily. Back view of the front tread sections. Close-up of the head. Number one again. So, let's get down to what I've got so far here. Get the camera back far enough where, where we can see it. Yeah, that'd be better there. We don't need the mouse in the picture. So basically, I've got uh, both sides built up. Again, I did it in halves, so I only had to design one side and then mirrored it. 
and uh, as we've seen from the pictures looking closer this this part probably needs to be bigger so when I make the the body part that sits on here I'll fatten that up and just use this as a mounting post um, I left a large area in the bottom where I can put in a, a hatch probably with the power switch to get batteries in and any control circuits or anything like that and on the uh, back side I've got the uh, fake grips worked in with the raised portions uh, being that there's two motors in there that means they they could be controlled independently right now I've just got them both wired up to the uh, same little 4 AA battery pack so obviously if I ran just one motor it would turn or if we ran one one way and one the other it would spin and spot and that stuff does work um, if I had all these treads to do over again I don't think I would glue them if you've watched the earlier videos I'll put links to them down below where I super glued them so that the, the paper clip pins that hold all these 55 separate little links together I don't think I would glue them I think I would just do a, a little bend on the end of the paper clip and when you shove it in that little bend would would wedge and tighten hold it in place because um, I've got a few of these that, that seem to be stiff and when they come around every now and then you can hear them creaking whereas on the very first video that I put up asking you guys to guess what I was I was building I hadn't glued any of them and that one ran uh, really silently and uh, fluid you hear that snap that just happened that's one side or the other I don't know which side it still has a tight one and when it comes around probably this is the tightest bend you can hear it pop snap down into place there it was again so if I had to do over I don't think I would super glue the uh, paper clip parts I would just do a little bend and call it good yes and some of these I can feel are, are still tight I am still have hopes that by the time I'm done with this project they will have worn in and uh, turned out better got the uh, bumper part across the front so yeah next part will be to design this uh, upper upper body part and uh, get that on there and see how it ends up looking